Welcome to episode number 65 of the Speaking Podcast. All our episodes can be found on speakingpodcast.com. We also have the new uh, awakeningpodcast.org and the speaking, the meditationpodcast.org. Today, my guest I met in AFEST maybe three or four years ago because she was doing an event that was basically gave me so much energy. I said, I, get, I want to get to know this lady. So please welcome Leila El Khadra. Kadri. <laughs> nice. Thank you, you might, very much, Roy. You might let the, the audience know who are you. Yes. Thank you very much for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, well, my name is Laila El Kadri. It's not that easy to pronounce. I, I know that. And uh, I get often asked, what do you do? When, who are you? And um, I've been leaning to the side of simplifying it and saying that I am here to help every single one of you that is ready to become a leader, to step into leadership. So I would call myself a, a leadership, mentor, a leadership expert. And the way I do that work is by making sure that you are working in your mind, in your emotions, in your body and in your soul, because there is no way to step into leadership unless we're taking all the parts of us with us. So I will be your leadership expert that also brings you embodiment, that brings you emotional intelligence, that brings you not only mindset, but uh, an awareness of the whole human experience. Beautiful, beautiful. And mm -hmm. like, there's a few things that I wanna discuss with you. One, and I think it's important is you, you've got a very good following on uh, the social media. And I, like, I see the videos you put up and I believe it's because you're really authentic, but how, how are you connecting with your audience? Oh my God, that question goes straight into my heart because uh, I wanna connect more. It's been one of the top in my, in my, in my priority with my work. And so if you are listening to this today, I really encourage you to reach out. Uh, I'm behind all the channels that are out there, even though the numbers of followings, followers are large. My team has a very good system in filtering so that I can get to, to, to connect with you. I feel like right now it's more important than ever to connect at a human level. And the way I am connecting so far is through being present and commenting and answering to comments and reading emails. So allocating some time of my life to really be present with the, what's coming through the channels. Um, I wanna start doing more uh, meetings, uh, online sessions, Zoom session, masterminds, um, so that I can really have a, a close feeling. And so one of the places where that's gonna happen is in my Facebook groups. Uh, we are starting, I'm taking two weeks break now, two weeks holidays, and then we are starting to be present every day on that channel. Uh, so I can hear people and see the faces and, 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 you know, understand who they are. Yeah, no, I think, and when you connect with people and you respond di directly, they, they tend to be like a true fan and they're kind of with you all the way. They appreciate it mm -hmm. that, that you're connecting mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would also like to change the word fun for tribe. I think it's important that we understand that um, if we want to create an impact, if we want to share a message, if we know that we have something that the world needs, that we start treating the world with, and, and those who listen to us with absolute respect, something in the world fan is someone that like looks up to you and consumes what you're giving. And I feel like as speakers, as leaders, as coaches, what we want is not to be consumed, but to have a real impact in the experience of the people that we speak with. So either audience or tribe or community um, and get a little bit out of the consumerism mentality. It's very easy as a speaker to fall into the number of likes and the number of hits and the number of views and just have vanity measures. That, that tells you nothing. Mm -hmm. what, is, what, what is going to make the difference is, is, are you connecting with your people? Is your people really getting your message? rather than just consuming your message. It's, it's it hitting home. And the only way, like if I'm having a conversation with you, the only way I can know if it's hitting home, if it's I ask you. And you go like, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, this is what you said. This is what I understood. Yeah, exactly. And like, I have seen you on the stage and like I, you do a lot of different things. You're like a ninja woman as far as I'm concerned. You do some amazing <laughs> stuff. But 
like you really connect with the, the audience when you're on stage and you just have a presence mm -hmm. about you. Is that something like, how did you develop that? How did I develop my presence on stage? Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> well, um, it's interesting because as, as a little girl, I was very clumsy and very shy. And I, um, I was bullied in school. So for those of you who had that experience when you were little, um, you can always recover from that trauma. So I had a lot of social anxiety and I had a lot of awkwardness. And I'm also very tall and my arms and my legs are very long. So it was always like difficult. And so at a certain point, um, I, I had to bring my awareness into my embodiment. It was so important for me to learn how to use this body because I realized that the most charismatic people, the, the, the messages that, that actually reach farther are not necessarily the most powerful messages or, or the most intelligent messages are those with, that are said by people that is most charismatic, right? I mean, we have a, the, the most dramatic example, an Adolf, Adolf Hitler, who is sharing a message of absolute destruction and hate, and yet convinces one of the smartest population in the world, which is the German population, to follow with his plan because the guy was really charismatic. He knew how to speak with his people. And so a lot of that charisma comes from embodiment, comes from being able to be present with your message beyond just your words. How do you move your body? How do you feel in your body? How are you, I always say, how are you sitting in your throne? And so for me to, to, to discover that uh, and to learn that, I actually became a somatic therapist. I went and I studied somatic therapy movement based. I started dancing. I started um, doing yoga, meditation, breath work. I studied anatomy. I, I really understood what, and I'm still in the process. This is an, an, an infinite ocean of wisdom, but what is our body? Like, what is, what is the, the geography of our body? What is like, what happens here? What is each body part expressing? What is each part of my body doing when I'm speaking? Uh, so if you take, if, if I am talking with you and you freeze me, I have full awareness of where my legs are and my arms are and my face is doing. A lot of people, when they go on stage and then they come down from stage and you ask them, do you remember what you did? Or they watch themselves, you know, they, they go on stage and then you film them and then they watch themselves and they go like, oh, I didn't know that I moved my hand so much. I didn't know that I walk up and down so much. I, I used to rock back and forth. <laughs> That's really on stage. <laughs> And so it is a, is a process, is a process of becoming embodied, is a process of having awareness of where your body is at, where your posture is, how you're breathing, what is the rhythm of your voice. And it's a long process. I'm still working with it. You know, I still, if, if Vision Lakshani takes me on stage last minute without asking, like he did last time in Pine Valley, it takes me a moment. It takes me a moment. Uh, my biggest trick in this, my, my, my secret sauce with this is take your time. You can go on stage and take a deep breath and have three, four, five, six seconds of silence and the world doesn't end. And in those six seconds of silence, there's so much that you can do. You can breathe, you can center, you can ground, you can connect with your audience. I like to slow down everything. It's a really good trick. And I still definitely need to do it because I still speak super fast. <laughs> no, you like, because I've tried a few different, there's times you have to, yeah, you have to step. I think the best is when you're actually teaching somebody else because it starts bringing you back to the basics and you start remembering, oh, I stopped doing that and you know, looking at the different ways of uh, preparing for yourself. So. Totally. And, and say with a workshop, because I know you do the different workshops. How do you actually organize your workshops? So the workshop that you did that you say gave you so much energy was uh, something that I call, back in the, in the day, I was calling it transformational dance. It was more of a free form. Today, we're the, I'm teaching it under the shape of presence, which is a program that I'm going to be launching in the next couple of months. I already taught one session of presence to Mind Valley University. I think it was around 2,000 people on their laptops like a few weeks ago. Um, and so basically what I do is I guide you through an experience that allows you to inhabit the different parts of your body. Let me say that again. You, you, all of you are living in your body and most of your time you have your presence in your mind, in your thoughts, you, you know, you're like 
so focused in what you're thinking that sometimes you can put one socks of each color and you wouldn't even realize until you got to the office, right? So the awareness of your experience is mostly happening in your head. However, you live in your body. And while you are like fully present in your head, your heart is pumping blood, your lungs are breathing, your liver is doing this thing. You're like, there is a whole lot of things happening, right? All of these activities that are happening are connected with your state of mind, your state of consciousness. If you are feeling happy, it's because there is a specific action happening in your system that is producing specific chemistry that is making you feel happy. We all understand serotonin is the happy hormone, right? But for serotonin to happen, there is a lot of all the things that are happening in your body at the same time that you're not aware of. What we do through the process of presence is we bring awareness into our bodies. We bring our, our, our attention to different parts of our bodies and we move them and we breathe with them in a way that helps the body produce that chemistry, produce those functions in a balanced way. And how, where I draw wisdom from to, to, do, to develop this practice is from a huge amount of different um, traditions. I studied uh, Tantra, I studied meditation, I studied uh, Taoism, I looked into Chinese medicine, I looked into somatic therapy. I brought all the pieces that I could find around how to operate, how to use this physical avatar. And I will, I will dare to say here, I'm in the baby, baby steps of this process. Our bodies are miracle machines. And we know of them, you and I, doctors, and, and maybe they know a tiny bit more, but like the, 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 the I'm going to put quotes here. The normal person knows about how her body functions at 3%. We should know most of the processes that are happening in our bodies. So when we are wanting our bodies to respond, and show up in the world for us the way we want, but we don't know how it works, is when we get frustrated. I always like to do this analogy. If I buy a Ferrari, right? And I sit in the Ferrari, but instead of putting gas, I'm gonna put a coffee, I'm gonna put three coffees on the car. And then I'm gonna sit on the car, turn on the key, and this thing doesn't work. And I'm gonna get real frustrated with the car because I just pay a bunch of millions of dollars and it's not working. But it's not, not working because the car has any problems. I just didn't treat the car how the car needs to be treated. Same with our body. So in that workshop, you got so much energy in us, not because I walked around giving you all guys a shot of something, right? I didn't give you anything you didn't have. I just guided you through a series of exercises for you to use what you have in the correct way. So suddenly your Ferrari had a lot of power. That's what I call present. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And like the fact that you're studying, you know, the body like that is incredible. And it's amazing that like you have a lot of people and, you know, they want to excel in life and they just think it's trying to, you know, the personal development side, but they ignore the body. I think the body is number one because without, if you can stimulate the body to have the energy, to have the focus, you can do anything. So you, you have started in the right place. And as you say, there is so much that it entails. Well, and well, well, the proof of this is smoking. Everybody knows smoke is bad for your lungs. The scientific community has accepted it. Even the government. Now you buy tobacco and it says it can kill you. But there's no doubt we still smoke because the body wins every time. The body's craving wins over the cognitive awareness of how bad tobacco is you got to talk with your body forget the mind you got to talk with your body and when you finally win in the body then nobody's going to convince you to pick up a cigarette again because even if you're forced to and you inhale it's going to make you feel sick right away because the body knows I, I remember reading a book uh, called biology some a danish guy and they were saying that the advertisements for the cigarettes and the you know anti-smoking they actually give triggers and they actually encourage people to smoke the way that it's designed so sometimes we wow. think that this is actually stopping but it's the exact opposite so to just be conscious not of not surprised uh, <laughs> yeah exactly not surprised <laughs> So um, when, when, when you're doing, like the Taoism you said, yeah? Taoism, is that how you pronounce it? Taoism. Taoism, yeah, what does that? Chinese life philosophy. Okay, um, like, did you do much of that? 
So the way I landed in Taoism is because the moment you take the red pill and you wake up using the metaphor, uh, the analysis of the, the, using matrix as Makes a metaphor sense. here. The moment you, you wake up, you start pulling the thread, no? To see, well, okay, I gave away the power of my life. Now I'm going to pick it back. The first thing I did was to sit down did a bunch of meditation, da, 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 da. And then you realize, okay, I can keep on working on my mind forever, but my body, it's screaming. Let me pull the thread. The moment I pull the thread of the body, very soon I arrive to sexuality. Why? Because sexuality is the root of our physical existence. We are born because two other humans have sexuality. We are created in the sexual area of a woman and we are birthed through her sexual organs. So if you want to go to the origin of a tree, you go to the seed. If you want to go to the origin of humanity, you go to sexuality, right? And of course, back then, beginning of 2010, first thing I land is in Tantra because that's just what's, you know, out there available to me. I studied Tantra in the island of Kopangan in Thailand. And very soon I realized that, yes, I like what this is talking about. It makes sense. It's 5,000 year old wisdom and it's giving me the, the, the ability to have agency over my own body. However, it's very ritualistic. There is a lot of gods and goddesses and like it's somehow not, it's not nerdy enough for my, for my rational mind. I come from college. I just finished my, my, my degree. So I'm like in, in an, an academic way of thinking and I find that this is lacking science. And so I start looking and I realize that there is a parallel wisdom um, lineage uh, to the tantras, which is the Taoist tradition. So it's, if Tantra comes from the, 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 the India part of the world, from that area, from the Hinduism, um, Taoism is the Chinese quote unquote version. And if you study Chinese medicine, which I have just barely touched the surface of, this is a whole life journey. It's like deep, deep, deep. But if you look into Chinese medicine, you realize that they have gone really deep. They have um, done already 5,000 years ago studies about hormones and about um, the, 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 the nervous system and its correlation with the different states of consciousness and the correlation between sexuality and consciousness. And so it's an entire life philosophy. It has eight school, schools within itself. It's Taoism, it's the Tao of philosophy, the Tao of health, the Tao of sexuality, the Tao of education, there are eight schools. And it's really complete and holistic. And so within that world, I found the part of my, of my mind that really needed the, the data could find it. Okay. Very interesting. I recommend anybody who is interested in figuring out how your body works, especially nowadays, Fox, we're being told a lot of things about how we should take care of our bodies and our health. I would recommend you to start doing your own research. Look into Chinese medicine if you want to find solutions to boost your immune system, to heal your own body. Whenever the traditional Western medicine tells you that there is no cure, go to the Chinese. They might have an answer. Exactly. Exactly. No, it's something I've, I've always looked at and I go the natural route all the time, you know, the, because the side effects from all these pharmaceutical drugs, yeah, they, they lead to the next problem. And so, yeah, stay away. There, there's normally a cure for everything. You ask me, what is the secret of my presence on stage? A, a big part of my energy and my radiance and my presence is because this body that you guys see in front of you, if you're watching this video, has close to zero chemistry in it, zero chemicals. My mother did not vaccinate me. I did not, was not put into any antibiotics. I think I've taken them twice in my life. I have had my entire life a really healthy and really natural um, way of treating my body. And so my immune system is very strong. My stamina is balanced. And that's what makes us be present is that this machine works. Whenever I feel sick or I'm tired or this is not having the presence it has now. So it's really, really important. No, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Trying to <laughs> touch all the areas. The exactly. <laughs> and like the one that, because for me, um, because I know breathwork, one for kind of getting your presence and kind of calming yourself for the stage, but also 
what it can do. Because like I've tried maybe five or maybe even 10 different types of work. I get amazing visualizations, but also the cameras. And I think, I don't know, do you look inside or what? But you become different once you start practicing the breath work. Because you might explain to people your, your, the methods you use and what you've benefited from it. Well, I'm not an expert in breath work. I utilize breath for my own, and I'm using it now for presence in a very um, back to basic way because we are breathing all the time and it's inhale, exhale. So there is different kinds of breath work that have different effects on the brain. I'm not an expert on this, and I encourage everyone to do research. It's amazing. However, what I can already tell you is breath has two really powerful um, effects on us. The first one is just by bringing my awareness, to the root of my own life. Because if I stop breathing for a few minutes, this is it. Over, game over, nothing else matters. The moment someone obstructs your, your, your channels of breath, that's it, like your, your entire priority list is gonna shift. So just by bringing your awareness to that, by bringing our presence that the mind calms down. So even if just for that, breathing, in whatever way you guys want to breathe, just inhale and exhale. You can count, you can do long inhales and long exhales. You just, you just play with it, but be present with your breath. That's already going to shift a lot of your mind state. The second thing is breathing is oxygenating our body. And we don't breathe to the full capacity of what we could. We have a patterns of really shallow breath. And we're not fully oxygenating our body. So, Difficult not to use this right now with what's happening in the world, but imagine what happens when you actually have a mask on your face all the time. So if you already were not breathing good enough, now you're breathing even less. And there is a reason why we and animals and plants and, and birds and every single thing that's alive in this planet needs to breathe. It's because that is what creates the cycle of purification. That's what creates the cycle of oxygenation. That's what keeps us healthy. And so when we do intentional breathing, whether it's breath of fire or holotropic breathing, or we're given the body extra amounts of oxygen, and that is affecting first the way our body and our, and our, our blood and our systems are purified and, and, and detox, but also the, the chemistry that's being produced in our brain. Reason why it's not rare to have visuals and visions, it's like psychedelic vision when you do um, intense breath work. By the way, please always do it with someone that knows what they are doing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and like, you know, you, you talk about that we, we bring, breathe shallow. Like if you look at a baby, the baby's belly is raising when they're, and then they, well, whatever way we're conditioned for later in life, we just take a few little shallow breaths and uh, yeah. It's, but once you start yeah. to practice it, you get clarity and it's, it's definitely worth, you know, taking your time and, yeah because like if you see something you get a shock it's like you know you just it's the breath is coming in straight away whatever reaction it's the breath that comes to your body that's that's the first indicator of that something is working or not working yeah, that. Exactly. and if you find yourself in a shallow breathing pattern right now where you listen to this don't punish yourself don't add on top of that the shame that i'm not doing anything wrong the, myself talking with you today i have been dealing the last two weeks with anxiety and as I'm talking with you today, I'm doing my best to breathe better. And so it's, it's also like that is it's like, it's like the screen of your iPhone. You get a notification that something is wrong. Don't attack your breath. Look into what is that the cause of. And maybe also realize that the whole collective is right now in fear, in anxiety, in tension, and you're tapping into that as well. Yeah. Yeah. have compassion for yourself and your breath oh, definitely no like and i, I tell people like, in, no matter what it isn't don't beat yourself up because when you're beating yourself yeah. you're hurting your own cells and your yourself don't just just accept it is what it is and just kind of think how can i change this and just yeah don't be, don't ever beat yourself up you always feel better when you can get out of that situation exactly exactly so I know you're doing the coaching as well, because like there's, there's a lot of the listeners that one, they're either coaches or two, they want to become coaches. So how do you, like what's your tips and tricks for the coaching side of things? So my tips and tricks for coaches? Yeah, for coaching or getting into being a coach. Okay. 
Woo! That's the sensitive one. <laughs> because there's two things happening in the world right now. The first one is everyone wants to be a coach. The second one is we need more. Listen to me. There is not enough coaches in the world for the work that is needed and what's coming. So the first thing is, if you really but ask yourself, like, put your, sit in front of the mirror and ask yourself, do I really want to be a coach? Not do I want to work a few little hours and make a lot of money, because that's bullshit. It's not true. It's not true. If you're a coach, you're going to be an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, you're going to work your ass off. I'm telling you. There's no other way. And thanks God, you're going to be working your ass off in something you love. So make sure you love it. If your answer is yes, I love it, this is it. I was born to help humanity wake up, then please find your niche in an intelligent way. Don't go coach the same that everyone else is coaching. Don't develop another practice to make a seven figure business. Or a, No, that's done, that's done. Find something that your community needs. Look around and see, what does my community need? What is needed in the people around me or the people that follow me or the people I wanna serve? What is really needed? Be honest in your coaching. Then you will be successful. And you'll make good money because humanity needs you. And it's going to need you even more. And there is no shortage of people that needs you. There is a shortage of honesty in the coaching world. Not a, not a shortage of audience. Maybe Beautiful. not the most orthodox answer, but... <laughs> I t actually, it's the best answer I've ever got regarding coaching. I love it. I love it. I think you hit the nail on the head with that one. That is fantastic. <laughs> Great. I see um, you're an author as well. You've uh, recently, have you been writing in a book? I am writing. I've been writing my life, my entire life. I share a lot through posts and through social media and through videos because I'm a filmmaker but I'm writing and my book will be ready. I mean, my book is ready, but I, I will release it when the message it can be heard. Uh, it's not yet. You know very well what I'm speaking about because I believe this is also why you've been holding your book back for a bit. Uh, there's something very important for those of us whose mission is to spread a message. It's to spread the message in the right language. And I don't necessarily mean English, German, French. I mean, how you are speaking, it's important. Can your audience understand your message? If I'm talking with a five-year-old, I'm not gonna talk the same way that if I'm talking with a seven-year-old. If I'm talking with people with emotional maturity of five, no matter what age they have, I'm not gonna speak the same way that if I'm talking with people that have a different emotional maturity. Everyone still needs to hear the message. So how we speak it and when we speak it. Don't give a really deep message 15 minutes before we go to bed because we're tired. We're not going to be able to hear it. Hold the message. Tell me tomorrow in the morning with a good coffee or a matcha. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm, I've write, I'm writing about the reason why we have abusers and we have abusers of all kinds. I'm not talking just about sexual abuse, but I'm talking about what's happening to our health and our freedom. It's because we have victim mentality. And so instead of fighting against the abuser, which also has to happen, um, it's time for us to eliminate the victim mentality from our collective and individual consciousness. I feel like in a few years, maybe short sooner than I thought. Um, this no, I, I think well maybe sooner. No, I think there's a, the, the awakening is happening. There's a lot more that I've kind of clued on. And th to be honest, I was conscious like, with my own book. I was conscious of the language as well, because I'm trying to appeal to the broad audience. And there was, you know, there was somebody that's a really good author. You now they've got, you know, brilliant. Uh, they came first in some competition, World One competition, and they started to rewrite it for me, saying, "Look, I could do." And I just thought, "No, it's not going to reach the people." You know, that's re reaching the higher levels, and I want to keep it simple so that it touches home. And you know, sometimes you have to have the language to and understand. Like you say, some people have the mentality of younger people, and uh, you need to reach them all. Yeah. And, and hey, if you are starting your coaching practice, you know, for the people that is listening to us, if you, you are one of those that answer yes to my question, yes, this is your passion, you're starting your coaching practice, but you're new and you feel a little bit insecure and you don't know and you've not tested it, start coaching the five-year-olds. 
and I don't mean the age now, like f f follow with me with a metaphor, right? That, like if you're teaching meditation, don't try to wrap your head around how do I teach meditation to scholars that graduating from college in philosophy? No, baby. Go to how do I teach meditation to people that don't even know what meditation is. How do I find a way? But everybody knows what anxiety is. Everybody knows what I can't stop thinking is, right? Everybody knows what happens when your mind goes bananas. Start talking that you don't even need to use the word meditation yet. And that is going to boost your self-confidence because in Spanish we say, en la tierra de los ciegos el tuerto es el rey, which means in the land of the blind, the one eyed is the king. But in the land of the two eyes, the one eye, it has only half the vision, right? So start teaching in the land of the, of, the, of the blind if you feel like you only have one eye. And that's going to help you feel comfortable and confident enough. And then you start going higher. Plus, I'm going to use an expression I don't love, but the masses. Those down there that haven't even had the time to hear about meditation because they're too worried with survival. Those are the ones that need you the most right now. No, totally agree. Oh, I'm definitely message. passionate about this. <laughs> no, that's a beautiful message. I'm sweating <laughs> over here. <laughs> do you do you um, do you create uh, like events as well? Do you do kind of few day stuff, or is it just a workshop? Yeah, I I used to do. No, no, no. I have a I have a training. I have a whole year training that happens online and then it has three in-person retreats which is normally like between 15 and 30 uh, people and I do one-on-ones as well one-on-one -on -one VIP uh, in-person work right now obviously everything is on hold I live in the beautiful island of Bali in Indonesia and we're still figuring out if the borders are opening for our families to come say hi so I've put them on hold all of that and I'm focusing on creating my offerings online and making them as accessible as possible for everybody okay. and when like when you were doing it what, did, what way did you say when you had the people not the online stuff but uh, how would you structure like say an event because everyone has their own kind of method i'm just curious how you 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 organize yeah it. that's a really good question because so i can i can share with you how i do it but i think it's better to share that there is we were talking about the importance of saying that, sharing the message in the right language at the right time, right? Well, if you go into the, and put these two together, what you get is the methodology, right? I have the system to share my message that makes that the message is more um, powerful. To use a very simple metaphor, if I'm teaching choreography, dance, right? To someone that doesn't know, and I teach them the whole dance, they most likely won't get it. We'll have to repeat it a thousand times. However, if I break it step by step and they first learn one step and then when they finish the step, then they learn the second step, then I will get them to build the choreography soon. So the way you structure the, your message, it's your methodology. And that is unique of each one of you and your messages. When I teach, I have a, project, a program that I actually call unique, where I teach coaches, healers, speakers, anybody that has a message, a gift, uh, a, a skill that wants to be shared. I teach them how to package this in a way that it lands, that is effective, that it can be received. And a big part of the work we do is precisely designing that methodology. So I have a different way in each one of my workshops, depending on what is the message that I want to make them come across. And what I teach my coaches, what I teach my speakers is to learn that system of building methodologies so they can, on the fly, create a workshop. Little story, we were at Main Valley University in Pula, Croatia. I think it was one of the last days, big stage and the amphitheater, some thousand people there, or I don't know how many. And Vision Laksiani comes on the back and says, hey, I love your dress. In five minutes, you're on stage. Here is your mic. Vision Laksiani is the founder of Main Valley and APEST. He didn't even tell me what I was teaching. So I have a, for a first moment of freak out, second moment, by the time I'm going to ask, he's gone. And uh, here's Dragna, I think it was Dragna, 
And I'm like, all right, what is this about? And then she tells me it's all a, a, a talk about states of consciousness and vision wants me to do a meditation in connection. We're talking five minutes. I had time enough to go pee and come back. In the time that I went to go pee, put my dress in place and come back, I developed everything that was going to happen on stage. Not because I'm a genius, but because I have a system. My system always goes, and I'm giving away my secret sauce here, is mind, body, and emotion. Why? Because whatever it is that I'm going to teach you, if I can get your mind to get it at the same time as your emotional system and at the same time as your body, it's going to stick with you. Best brainwashing in the human history. Best ever. That's why the movie theaters are comfortable, you can eat, and the movie is going to talk to your emotions and to your mind. And that's how entire populations are being brainwashed these days film industry best way to plant a thought in people and then it grows by itself so in a way what i'm saying is find a way that you can brainwash your audience the best possible way for your message to to grow but i say like i really say it with it with with no intention of deceiving here it's like you know that your message is good and if you're listening to us right now i i know that your message is good you have to find the best way for that message to land take root and grow. And so I particularly have designed this system where I'm going to structure everything. In this case, I needed to teach about connection. So I make them do an exercise. I explain connection first. So we take out of the mind. First one, because she's otherwise is bothering. Second, I make them do an exercise that emotionally connect them. They turn around and look at sometime in, someone in their eyes. Did I gaze in for a few minutes? And in that, while they were doing the eye gazing, I m help them monitor and, and um, mediate their physical reaction. So the moment I look into someone, I experience the emotion of, let's say, discomfort. And then I was telling them what was happening in their bodies and guiding them to breathe in a way that will help the body make space for that shift. So they walked away with a full experience of connection not just the theory of connection. That's why my workshops are 90 minutes like anybody else's and it's one time in the whole thing, but nobody ever forgets it. I keep on giving interviews and podcasts and uh, with people from Mind Valley that did that one dance workshop you did, I don't remember the name, but it changed my life because it was a full experience. Then you have brilliant speakers that are talking with, with you for 90 minutes from stage Two months later, you don't remember. Oh, yeah, I remember this person. I have millions of followers. What was he talking about? Because there was no experience in your body. There was no change in you. I hope the people realize that was a long what answer. gold you've just given them. <laughs> you need to go back and listen to that one again. <laughs> That's the secret <laughs> sauce that you've all been looking for. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. Brainwashing, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Brilliant. So moving forward, what, what's, what, what's going on? You're putting a course together. Yes. That's true. Yeah. So just before we wrap up the previous question, go watch the movie Inception. I'll just say that. Everyone, rapid, sexy. <laughs> moving forward, I'm taking a two week break now and to mid September uh, to go with a boat to a group of desert islands in the ocean and being communion with God and nature. When I come back, we're starting a six month launch and I would encourage all of you to drop by my social media and make yourself known. Comment, text me, let us know that you were there and we will uh, guide you to this Facebook group where everything is gonna happen. I'm planning to have in the first month around 6,000 of my closest thrive to really gather there and share the wisdom and share the share share what is needed so the knowledge right now for all of us and our message to be really impactful um i will be first launching a free training that i you all are invited to join then i will be launching a program for all of you to activate your physical emotional and mental avatars so to understand how your body works, how your emotion works, and how your mind works so that you can use your Ferrari properly. And then towards the end of the year, we will be launching Unique, which will help you once you have awakened yourself and your body. Now you can take your message, bottle it up, wrap it in the right way, and send it out 
in a way that um, first immediately starts creating revenue because you need to be abundant in order to keep spreading your message. And second is a message that lands and grounds and grows and, and has a powerful impact and a powerful ripple effect. We need all of you listening to this podcast right now to get out of your own way if you're afraid or scared or anything and start sharing your message. Honestly, it's, it's the time is now. The time is now for, for the wisdom that you all have to drop. Definitely. And uh, what, what's your social media, what website, where can they find you? So head over to Instagram, Laila El Kadri. El Kadri. So my name is L A Y L A E L K H A D R I. I'll say that one more time L A Y L A E L K H A D R I. Once you figure out the spelling correctly, then you can find me all across the board because there's lailalkadri.com leads you to my website where you can sign up for my newsletter and then we're really connected on the Gmail uh, arena. You can go to Instagram. You can go to my fan page on Facebook. You can even go to my personal page on Facebook. Um, I won't be able to friend request you because go over the 5,000. But I. But they can follow you there. anyway. Can't uh, they? They can follow me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they can. And please uh, subscribe to YouTube. We're sharing as much as we can and as much as YouTube let us. But we we're gonna start sharing a lot of free video content on YouTube. And then if you're really committed to this, if you really, really want to make this happen, send me an email personally. Tell me your story. Tell me what you need. Tell me how you want to collaborate. Like I'm here. I'm a real person and, and I'm very, very committed to this mission. Beautiful. Listen, it's been wonderful. Thank you very much for all you've shared. Thank you very much. Roy. It's a pleasure. So that's all for today. Uh, our episode is also going to be on BitChute and YouTube and uh, be sure to subscribe, give us a five-star rating and you'll find every episode on speakingpodcast.com. Until next week, take care.